I found this application note on the quantitative analysis using ATR FTIR spectroscopy where they show how mixtures of ethanol and water can be analyzed using this technique. I thought this would be an interesting way to study whether or not we could determine the concentration of alcohol in beverages such as wine or beer. Turns out that when one looks at the ethanol peaks or the CO stretch in ethanol, we can get uh, Beer's Law style plots. And uh, in this case, they demonstrated between 1 and 5% alcohol contents being uh, rather precisely measured. And I want to see if we can use this for slightly higher concentrations, such as in wine. So the method that we use is the method of standard addition using a constant uh, volume of the analytes, start off with five samples, each one having, say, 200 microliters of wine in, uh, in each one of the, uh, uh, the sample, uh, sample compartments. And then we add known concentrations of, the, of ethanol to our uh, samples. So in this case, I start off with one that doesn't have any L uh, ethanol added, then 40, 80, 120, and 160 microliters, and then top those off with water in order to get to the same constant volume so that the sample has been diluted to the same, uh, uh, the same amount in each case. What I'm showing here is uh, how we could analyze this, uh, uh, these data using Mathematica. And uh, so I'll walk through my, uh, my notebook here on how I solve these. I will try to pause so that you could pause the video and type the information in yourself. But I want my students to learn how to do this on their own, so I'm not providing the, uh, the actual Mathematica notebook. I created the table of uh, of of volumes using uh, this symbol up here so that means that the actual x values that uh, I'm going to be plotting against which is the microliters of ethanol can be found from this uh, from this symbol after setting the directory and loading in the uh, the file names each one of these uh, data sets were acquired from the FTIR and saved from the FTIR instrument as CSV files I can then fairly easily load the data um, such that all of the uh, spectra are recorded in one symbol. This makes data processing uh, a little bit easier since I'm applying the same tools to each, uh, uh, each file. Next step is to apply a couple uh, options to the uh, 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 to the list line plot to the graphing to make the graphs look a little bit prettier. Let's see if I start blowing this up for the rest of the video. Makes it a little easier to see. And we'll start off with a dynamic plot using manipulate to visualize some of the data. So there are five uh, spectra that were acquired. Again, starting with no, micro uh, no ethanol added all the way up to 160 microliters. We saw a general increase until this last point here, and it looks as if the fifth data point has uh, has some sort of experimental error associated with it. It should continue to go up, but it clearly does not in that case. So I suspect that that point is going to have to be removed at some point. So we'll look at a couple different approaches to analyzing uh, these data. First is just a single point of absorbance. I will create a uh, function that interpolates the uh, data points into a, uh, uh, into a smooth curve. And this makes it easier to extract information, such as the uh, absorbance at a given wave number, or uh, later on in integrating the, uh, the spectrum. So for right now, I can just take interp this function and use any of the, uh, the data sets, one through five, and extract the absorbance at 1043 uh, wave numbers, and we get those, uh, those results. That function, using the, uh, uh, the unnamed function, 
is the same as creating a table where we loop over uh, uh, the length of the data set. And you see we get the same exact results. When we plot this along with the linear model, we see that that fifth point is causing some troubles. The f first point is actually not on this screen. It doesn't show it. So it's clearly an issue, and so that needs to be removed. Fortunately, it's the very last point, and so we can take make a, uh, a Mathematica trick here where we use m the most command, and that chooses all of the data in a list except for the last one, since the last one is the one that we are inter interested in. This works nicely for us. And sure enough, when we create the linear model, this time I am going to save the linear model as a symbol for later use and plot it we see that we get a fairly nice curve uh, that, uh, that fits the linear expression. And from that, we can extract the slope and the intercept. And we know that the slope and the intercept are going to give us the x-intercept, which we can then divide by the volume of the uh, wine that was used in our sample and then multiply by 100 to get a percent. And sure enough, we get around 32% for the alcohol content in this wine, which is absolutely, completely, and utterly wrong. The reason for that is because we're not doing any background subtraction. So let's look at how we would go about doing this. Starting off with our absorbance, uh, we need to calculate the, uh, uh, the amount of background. And if we take another look, at the plots up here, what we're actually trying to do is noticing here that the uh, that this point is not at zero and this point is not at zero. It's around 0 0.04. So there is a fair amount of space down here, background, that needs to be subtracted out of our uh, uh, out, of, out of our measurement. So in principle, we're going to draw a line between here and here, find out what this that midpoint is so that I can figure out what the absorbance is due to the background. So we create a background function, which again uses the interpolated data, finding a, mini, uh, a linear model fit between two points, low and high, and from that previous example, we see that uh, uh, the peak is encompassed by the wave numbers 1020 and 1065. So we create a straight line between 1020 and 1065, and we get the individual backgrounds. And they are around 0.04, which is uh, what I was expecting. And now we create a new set of absorbance values, which are background subtracted. Notice how we took BGY, subtract these from the earlier points, do the same process where we create a linear model, plot it, get the best fit parameters. Again, nice, smooth Beer's Law plot. And now we get a much more reasonable uh, alcohol concentration of about 12%. Now, if we saw in the... Uh, uh, in the application note, they're actually performing a uh, a background, I'm uh, sorry, an area calculation as opposed to a peak calculation. So I'm going to try the area calculation to see how that uh, how that works. Building upon the previous work, now what we need to do is create an area function. So we're integrating the uh, uh, the plot from 1020 to 1065, so those are the limits of the uh, uh, of the one peak, and we get areas for each one of those uh, uh, each one of the peaks for each one of the concentrations. Likewise, we need to subtract out the background, and we will do so by using the uh, uh, the background function, which was just creating the two points uh, line, assuming that the background is uh, is linear. And we get a set of uh, background values, background areas. Subtracting those two gives us our new set of y values. Again, we crunch the numbers, create a linear model, 
plot that model, extract the best fit parameters, use the best fit parameters to get a concentration, reasonable linearity, and we get around 11% for the concentration of the alcohol. It's possible that the errors that we see here, the slight deviations, make this number and the previous one uh, similar st from a statistical standpoint, but a propagation of error needs to be performed in order to do that. Since my students know, know how to do that, they're going to. So if you're watching this uh, and you're not one of my students, I hope this was useful. Let me know in the comments. If you are one of my students, these are the next steps that I want uh, to be done following this analysis.